Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sense, and today I'm coming at you with the top 10 most popular men's fragrances that came out this year, 2019. So we're right at the end of the year. I figured now's as good a time as any to go over the top 10 most popular fragrances, and we're gonna do this the same way that we've done it in the past, which is going off of what you guys have voted on Fragrantica as being the most popular of the year. So these are all fragrances that were released in the calendar year of 2019, or at least had their official release in 2019. We've got a lot of fragrances to go over, so let's jump right into it. Should also let you guys know that on Fragrantica.com right now, they're having their annual awards voting. So there are a bunch of different categories on Fragrantica. You can go there and vote about what you think is the best fragrance for each one of those categories. If you're interested, check that out. This is not in any way, shape, or form sponsored by Fragrantica, but I'll probably talk about those awards in a later video after they're over and give my thoughts on what I think about them. All right, guys, we've got 10 fragrances to go over here. Don't cheat. Don't go onto Fragrantica.com right now and see what placed where. Just think about the fragrances that came out this year and maybe think about where you think those fragrances placed. Also should let you guys know, in case you're unaware, these could change. Based off of popularity on Fragrantica, people voting, these things could change around. But as of this video, this is where everything is ranked. Two honorable mentions. The fragrances that came 11th and 12th. They were just outside the top 10. Jean-Paul Gaultier Lebo was 11th as of this video. So you gave it a good shot, Jean-Paul Gaultier. Just so close. I guess you were first loser in this video. That didn't sound very nice, but... You know what I mean. And then the other fragrance, Bulgari Man Wood Neroli was 12th. So those two fragrances just barely, barely, barely outside the top 10 most popular according to Fragrantica. So here we go, 10 fragrances. Number 10, 10th most popular men's release of 2019. Gentleman Cologne by Givenchy. Bergamot, Iris, Lemon, Pettigrain, and Vetiver are some of the notes in this fragrance along with and Broxen. This one has a very pleasant citrus opening with a fresh iris. The iris here does not come across like a makeup-y or lipsticky iris like you'll find in something like Jerome Intense or Valentino Uomo Intense. The fragrance also features Ambroxan, which turns a few people off according to the reviews on Fragrantica that some people have left. To me though, the Ambroxan is not overwhelming in this fragrance. It's not done with a heavy hand. So for me, completely fine with the Ambroxan here. This one is a classy, fresh type of fragrance, one that you're gonna wear in spring and summer, fragrance that you could easily wear to the office if you wanted to, especially good at daytime as well. This is one of the fragrances that I think is on the higher end of designer releases for the year. I think it's really nice, very well done. The performance on it is not great. Projection, the longevity, both of those are on the the lighter side of average. So if you were going to knock that fragrance for something, that would probably be it. Like I said, some people don't like the Ambroxan in it, but for me personally, I think the Ambroxan in here is fine. The iris smells great. Uh, the citrus, the pedigree, the vetiver, everything in this fragrance to me works. So that one comes in at number 10 in the top 10 most popular men's releases of the year. Gentleman Cologne. And if we're talking Gentleman Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum, and Cologne, like one, two, three, I'd say the best is the Eau de Parfum Cologne in second place, and the Eau de Toilette of those three is the worst. Of course, I am talking about the Givenchy Gentleman line of fragrances, in case I didn't make that apparent enough. Number nine is a blue fragrance. This is one that I gotta tell you guys, I'm not in love with. I did a review of this fragrance. I actually had this on my five worst releases of the year video. So, kind of lets you know where I stand with this one. But ninth most popular of the year, according to Fragrantica, Dolce & Gabbana K. Juniper, citrus, vetiver, and pimento are some of the notes in this scent. It has a clean herbal shower gel kind of vibe in the initial opening. Like I said, it's a blue fragrance. I mean, you can tell by looking at it most likely. So by blue fragrance, I get this question fairly often. What do I mean? I mean a fragrance that is going strictly 
for extreme versatility, compliment factor, and uh, mass appeal. Very often, fragrances that are blue fragrances will feature ambroxan or grapefruit, some sort of citrus. Uh, could also be bergamot, sometimes orange. You'll have things like juniper or ginger in there typically to give it kind of a fresh briskness in the opening. And then occasionally in the base, you will have vetiver or tonka or incense. And they kind of use those a couple different ways in blue fragrances, but ultimately they're all trying to accomplish the same thing, which is those three things I mentioned uh, originally, your versatility, Complement factor, mass appeal. And there's nothing wrong with versatility, complement factor, and mass appeal. I wanna make that clear, there is nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, blue fragrances typically, that's what they're going for. So this one, K, to me personally, is a lower tiered blue fragrance. If you put this up against the heavy hitters, I will pick those other blue fragrances 10 times out of 10. Blue de Chanel, Sauvage, Y, even your ones that maybe aren't quite as well known, like Aqua Atlantique, something like that. I will pick those fragrances over K. Okay. The bottle, a little bit love it or hate it. A lot of people hate it. <laughs> I am not a huge fan of the bottle, but some people really like it. They like the understated kind of basic rectangular look with the the gaudier crown on top that draws a little more attention. Some people really dig that. And if you do dig it, that's fine. Uh, it's just not something I personally really like. Not a huge surprise to find this in the top 10 of most popular on Fragrantica. It is a major release by a major designer house after all. And at number nine, Dolce & Gabbana K. Gonna take us to number eight. This one is a Paco Rabanne fragrance, and it is the newest in their Invictus line. Invictus Legend. Grapefruit, bay leaf, salt, sea notes, and amber are some of the notes in this fragrance. Basically, if you like the Invictus DNA, I would be very surprised if you dislike this fragrance. It's very sweet and it's fresh. And this one, for me, out of the entire Invictus line, at least the ones that they're still making, it's the best one. They technically are still making Invictus Aqua, but Invictus Aqua 2016 is a bit different than the Invictus Aqua that's out nowadays. On the whole, Invictus Aqua 2016 is my favorite. But as I said, the ones that are still in production as of today, this one, in my opinion, is the best one. Invictus, big compliment getting fragrance, uh, especially for younger guys out there. It's got good performance, and with this one being the best one in the line, not a big surprise to have this one in the top 10. Honestly, I'm surprised it's not higher. There are a couple of fragrances that as of right now are above this one in popularity that I think in actual real world circumstances with your casual everyday guy, they would like Invictus Legend more than a couple of the fragrances that are above this one. Either way, number eight, Invictus Legend. Number seven is a fragrance that, like I was just saying, I think is actually not as popular as Invictus Legend in everyday life, but on Fragrantica is more popular. And it's this Guerlain Loam Ideal. Cool. Vetiver and Neroli, water notes, almond, and mint are some of the main notes in this fragrance. And I've made mention of this multiple times on the channel, but Loam Ideal Cool is a replacement for Loam Ideal Cologne, which has been discontinued. In my opinion, this one, Cool, is not a bad fragrance. I like the way it smells, but I like Cologne more than I like Cool. So to me, this is a release that I'm kind of iffy on on the whole, just because I feel like they're replacing a fragrance with a take, you know, with the same DNA that is actually worse than the fragrance that they're replacing. So it doesn't make a ton of sense to me. The mint is obviously the star of this fragrance. They've even given it that green tint. That's obviously what they're trying to pull you in with. They even name it cool. You know, the mentholated kind of mint, it gives you that cooling feeling. That is 100% their their tactics on this fragrance, their strategy with this release. I like the mint, but it doesn't blow me away. And I prefer the citrus combo and cologne. Still though, this is a nice release. And if you can pick it up at discounters for a good price, absolutely add it to your rotation if you're a fan of the Lomity All line. It does have, after all, that creamy almond, which you'll find in every other release in that line. That is gonna take us to number six, and number six is a fragrance that really needs no introduction. This fragrance gets an enormous, enormous 
amount of hate on Fragrantica. You may already know what it is just by me saying that. This one, Office for Men by Fragrance One, which is of course Jeremy Fragrance's fragrance line. It has bergamot, modern woods, cachalox, uh, paradisone, and ambroxan as some of the notes. And you already know why this has gotten so much hate on Fragrantica, and that's just because it's associated with Jeremy Fragrance. Fragrantica, on the whole, is not a site that is super supportive of YouTubers, and especially so when we're talking about Jeremy. This fragrance is very fresh, it's very clean, it's a big compliment puller, it does have good longevity, good projection, and those are all things that you would expect with the scent, because I mean, that's essentially how it's pitched. One thing I will say, which comes off a little bit strange to me, is that this third batch, to me, smells less scratchy, a little bit less abrasive than the previous batches. And I know that this is supposed to be the exact same fragrance, no difference whatsoever between batch one and batch two and batch three. But to me, it does come across like there's a bit of a difference. And I've actually talked to multiple reviewers and they've said the exact same thing. So I don't know if this is some weird mind trip that we've all gone on where we see a black bottle and for some reason we're like, oh, this smells different to me now, but it really does. You can spray them side by side, the different batches, and pick out little differences. Either way, to me, this bottle is the one that smells the best of the bunch. So I don't know why that is, but I just figured I'd let you know. Realistically, Office for Men is not at all as bad as people on Fragrantica would make you think. They have it on there as if this is the worst fragrance of all time, and that's clearly not at all the case when you actually smell it. Is it something highly artistic that's trying to get a story across? No, it's absolutely not. Is it a fragrance that comes across extremely natural smelling? Also, absolutely not. But that's also not what it's going for. It's just trying to be, uh, like I said, a fresh fragrance that is appealing to most anybody that's going to smell it, not including hardcore fragrance fanatics. And it accomplishes that very well. That will pull compliments for you, it'll last for a long time, and it is uh, one of the most popular fragrances of the year. Office for Men. Gonna take me to number five, and this one's a little bit interesting because the other two fragrances in this line, when they were released, were one of the top three most popular fragrances of that year, if not the most popular. And yet this one, currently at number five. So it is not hitting quite as hard, it would seem, at least as far as Fragrantica is concerned, as the other releases in the line. It's this one, Dior Sauvage Parfum. Sandalwood, frankincense, tonka, vanilla, and mandarin orange, some of the main notes in this fragrance. This one essentially follows the Blue de Chanel blueprint, where you have the uh, popular blue fragrance, the Eau de Toilette is the freshest one, and then as you go down the line, the Eau de Parfum, the Parfum, it gets a little bit richer, a little bit darker each time. This one does not hit you in the face with an Ambroxan, a powerful Ambroxan, like you'll find in that Eau de Toilette. Instead, this has a focus on sandalwood and frankincense. Again, going for a richer, deeper, more mature vibe while still retaining the same DNA. As far as Sauvage fragrances go, <laughs> Dior Sauvage, this one is my favorite, just in terms of the scent profile. I think Sauvage Parfum smells superior in quality and just overall scent than the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum. For me though, the projection is not very good, uh, if I'm being honest. It's, it's pretty close to my skin after it works through the opening. And we're talking about a fragrance that at retail is 150 bucks for a 100 ml size. So this is on the absolute upper end as far as designer pricing goes. Some people have said that Sauvage Parfum is in actuality just a monstrous projector. That this fragrance will fill up a room, choke people out, just absolute beast mode. For me, that is not the case. And I know some people will say, oh, it's olfactory fatigue. You sprayed this on a couple times and it was so powerful, it overwhelmed your sense of smell. And it was still there, you just didn't know it. Believe it or not, I do know what olfactory fatigue is, and I know how to determine if that's what's going on or not. That is not the case. 
with Sauvage Parfum. Now if I went really heavy with this, if I sprayed this on a whole, whole bunch, maybe I could get some solid projection for a long time, for many hours. But if I give this normal wear, four sprays, five sprays, it does not project like a monster. And Sauvage Eau de Toilette at four or five sprays, that really actually will fill up a room. So for me, this is a fragrance I really like. I like the way it smells. It's just the projection is not good and the pricing is even worse. That's gonna take us to number four, which is a Tom Ford Private Blend. And this one is one of the ones that surprised me the most in terms of how highly it's ranked in terms of popularity. It's Beau de Jour by Tom Ford. This is another one, and I'm not saying that this is a lower quality than this fragrance or anything like that, but in terms of popularity that I would think Invictus Legend would overall be more popular than Beau de Jour, if no other reason than because this is so much more accessible to people out there as compared to Beau de Jour. Patchouli, oak moss, rosemary, geranium, lavender, and lavendin, some of the notes in Beau de Jour. And this one is a take on a classic aromatic fougere barbershop kind of scent. It gets compared to YSL Reeve Gosh, gets compared to Zeno by Davidoff. Between those two fragrances, to me, it leans much closer to Reeve Gosh than it does Zeno. This is an extremely classy, sophisticated, refined gentleman's kind of fragrance, though I don't think it's going to appeal as much to younger guys out there looking for your next sweet amber wood, compliment monster, compliment bomb kind of scent. This is more for your middle-aged guys and up, and it has extreme versatility in my opinion. One that you could wear day or night, any season, easily wear it to the office, easily, easily wear that one formally as well. This is the first new private blend that I've gotten probably this entire year. Uh, private blends lately have just been being cranked out one after another after another. Used to be when a new private blend came out, it was like, oh wow, or a new private blend line. You would go, wow, I cannot wait for that because it was just banger after banger after banger. Every one of them was awesome. And then it started to get oversaturated. And when new private blend fragrances would come out, people would go, eh, who cares? Unless it was one that made a splash like effing fabulous or Lost Cherry made a little bit of a splash. But this one is uh, very good, as long as you do like those classic uh, aromatic fougere type of scents. We are in the top three. So which three do you think made it? A couple of these are extremely obvious, maybe all three actually extremely obvious, but we're at number three, and it is this one, Emporio Armani Stronger With You Intensely. Toffee, vanilla, tonka, cinnamon, and suede, some of the notes in this fragrance. and. Just, you know, reading off those few notes kind of lets you know what kind of scent this is. Toffee, vanilla, tonka, three of the main notes. This one is warm and sweet. A little bit of a sweet tooth, gourmandy kind of scent. Also has a good amount of that cinnamon spice in there along with all those sweet notes. This one is another compliment pulling kind of fragrance and it has very good performance as well. Gets a little bit of hate on Fragrantica, probably just because it's an Emporio Armani flanker. In my opinion, this one is an improvement over the original Stronger With You. If I could have only one, that one or this one, I would choose intensely. Also gonna be kind of in the same family or style of fragrance as Spice Bomb Extreme. So if you like that one, you will more than likely enjoy this fragrance as well. And this was a pretty good year for Armani fragrances because you have this one, Stronger With You Intensely at number three. And then at number two, Armani Code Absolute. Tonka Vanilla Suede in this fragrance, just like the last one, though this one also has woody notes and nutmeg, and uh, they really actually don't smell at all similar. They just share those few notes. Code Absolute is a fragrance that I think is fantastic. This is my favorite release of 2019, so for me, not at all a surprise to see this one in the top 10 most popular. It does have a similarity to Code Profumo, though I think this one is superior to Code Profumo. This one comes across more refined, uh, just better executed. It's almost like they took that DNA and put it out the way it should have been released originally. Though Profumo, maybe some younger guys might gravitate toward just a little bit of additional sweetness in that one, but Absolute is, is fantastic in my opinion. I absolutely love the way this one smells. I've talked about this one a ton on the channel, especially lately, so we'll hop up to the next fragrance, which is the number one most popular release in 2019, uh, as of right now, <laughs> according to Fragrantica. And uh, yeah, it's this one. 
Mont Blanc Explorer. Bergamot and Broxen, Akigala Wood, Vetiver and Pink Pepper. Some of the notes in this fragrance. You guys know what this fragrance is, I'm sure. Probably 95% of you, maybe more, already know what this is, which I guess is why it's number one in terms of most popularity for this year. Explorer is essentially Mont Blanc's take on Creed Aventus. So it's a designer version of Aventus if you wanna boil it down extremely simplistically. This has been covered by basically every single fragrance YouTuber out there. It has a really nice presentation as far as designer fragrances go in my opinion. Very weighty in your hand. It has a classy look to it. The fragrance is fresh. It's attention grabbing. It's compliment pulling. It has a good amount of ambroxan in there. It's like you took Creed Aventus and modernized it. <laughs> as a designer. I mean, that is how it comes across to me. The versatility is through the roof and people love this fragrance. Maybe not hardcore fragrance guys, but your average person out there loves this fragrance. And it's at number one. So there we go, Explorer. The fragrance that was roundly mocked when it was first released is now Homecoming King. Good job, Explorer. So there we go, guys. As of this video, these are your top 10 most popular men's fragrances that were released this year in 2019. I do expect that there will be change as time goes on, as people get their hands on some fragrances that maybe were difficult to get a hold of this year. Some of those may move up, some of these may move down. You never know, but as of the end of 2019, this is how this year has shaped up. I'll attempt to do a unisex list here very soon because the unisex list is actually where you'll find more niche fragrances. A lot of times niche fragrances will be marketed as unisex, I think just so that they have a bigger overall market. Instead of saying this is for men, this is for women, you kind of pigeonhole yourself that way. So a lot of times niche fragrances, indie fragrances, market themselves as unisex, even if a particular fragrance leans much more masculine or much more feminine. And that's because a lot of times with niche and indie fragrances, it's harder for them to sell their product, to get their name out there. By making it unisex, you kind of market to everybody. A brand like Dolce & Gabbana has enough money that they don't care. They can make a fragrance for men and women, no problem. But Indian niche brands, sometimes, if they're not one of the really big ones, uh, they'll run into issues. Let me know in the comments below which of these 10 is your most favorite of the year, and which of these 10 is your least favorite of the year. Well, at least out of these 10 anyway. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all your support. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.